the most impactful thing that he shared with me was a story about his wife, actually, something that his wife said that has really stuck in my head. He talked about how years ago they had an opportunity to move to the United States and live there, so they did. And then after being in the United States for a short period of time, his wife began to plead with him to take her back to Iran, which he felt like was crazy. I mean, who, who wants to move back to Iran under all sorts of oppression where, where the sharing of your faith could bring the end of your life or brutal incarceration or rape or all sorts of horrible things? Who, who, who wants to do that? I mean, who, who wants to move from the United States to Iran? She told him, there's a satanic lullaby here, and all the Christians are sleepy, and I'm feeling sleepy. And that, that little story uh, disturbed me because this woman was discerning a threat to her faith that was a greater threat than the kind of persecution that happens in Iran. And that threat was spiritual sleepiness. That is a more dangerous situation than persecution. And I had to ask myself the question, is that true? Is that true? Um, the word woke just means something completely different in the culture today. But I want to talk to you about woke in a spiritual sense because what we're finding more and more today is that people are just spiritually asleep. Spiritual sleepiness. We'll talk about it. If you've got your Bible this morning, if you'll turn with me in the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 34 through 36 is where I'm going to take off on this little journey with you this morning. <clears throat> in the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 34 through 36, Jesus says, But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come upon you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. I'm going to stop right there. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. Folks, there's a lot that's going to come to pass and we see it. The Bible is still being played out today as we go about. And it's so funny how we hear that the Bible is so antiquated today that it, religion, religion, that's a funny thing today to people. I don't want to talk to you about religion today. I want to talk to you about relationship. I want to talk to you about relationship because relationship is what's important when it comes to spiritual sleepiness. I want you to think about it like this. If you are in a relationship with somebody, for example, my lovely wife over here, in the first uh, couple of weeks in November, we'll have our two-year anniversary. I wonder if I only told her once a week, hey, I love you. I wonder if that'd be enough. I wonder if that would be enough to keep her attention or to keep her coming back. But I want to pose this to you. If I lay awake or if I lay in my recliner for two or three hours, my recliner is kind of like a, a, a study place for me. As a matter of fact, I call it my, my little sacred corner. That's my little corner of the house. Uh, if I lay in my recliner for two or three hours, Christy's probably going to assume I'm asleep. But can you imagine what she would think if I just slept the whole day away? Uh, she may think I'm dead, and I'm hoping at some point she's going to come over to make sure I'm breathing, that I, that, and that I still have a pulse. Well... When is the last time you checked your pulse? And that's not too hard. Matter of fact, a couple of fingers right there on your wrist. Do that with me right there and see. You got blood flowing through your veins. 
That's great, because as long as that blood's flowing within you, you have life. You have life. So, now that we've done that, let's talk about someone in a coma. The brain sometimes still works, but the one constant is that the heart is still beating. Most of the time, someone in a coma doesn't realize what's going on around them. The family may come in, hold hands, pray with them. Nurse may come in to change their bedding or their gown. The TV could be on in the room. But the person in that coma doesn't recognize any of that because of the deep slumber that they're in. What if I told you today there are Christians out there walking around with their eyes wide open who are also in that same type of coma Because they simply do not recognize what's going on around them. We have a tendency to confine our faith to four walls. We come in the church house and we confine it to right here. This is our time of worship. God, I have given you an hour. What more do you want from me? And that's it. That's what we give. We give that hour and we're good. Let's go home. And I don't have to give him anything else. I gave him my time. I gave my tithe. I gave an offering. I gave what was expected of me. What if he did that with you? What if he said, you get an hour of my time. Pray whenever you want for one hour, and that's all you get. That's what you get. But if we're living in compromise or we're not walking as close to the Lord as we should be, we have a tendency to become spiritually drowsy. We lull ourselves a little bit. Now in Mark 13, verses 35 and 37, through 37, Jesus says, and I want you to listen to these words because there's a, there's a theme. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, at midnight, at the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest, coming suddenly, he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. I'll tell you, there's a, we are all called to be watchmen of the church. Somebody asked me one day, said, well, what what qualifies you to be a watchman of the church or to talk about what goes on outside the church in a spiritual sense? Well, the Lord God, praise God, the Lord God said it himself, watch. Mm -hmm. Watch and listen. We cannot confine it to these four walls. We can't. No church should do that today. No church should confine it to four walls. Our faith and what is going on in the world around us. We can't do it. We have to watch. Our eyes have to be open. Yep. <clears throat> so I want to talk to you about four stages of sleep. Four stages of sleep, and we're going to do it. From a medical standpoint, but we're going to tie it in spiritually. We're going to tie it in spiritually. Four stages. In stage one, your eyes are closed and activity is reduced. Now, in this case, in order to avoid seeing what's going on around us, we simply close our eyes or look the other way. We do this to try to justify what goes on around us. Or we ignore it. We hear the news today. We know what's going on. And it's our tendency to just look the other way. We don't want to know what's going on around us. Because if uh, ignorance is bliss, right? Ignorance is bliss. If I don't know that exists, I'm okay. I don't have to know. It's not important. But Jesus says in Hebrews 10, 26, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth... There no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. There no longer remains a sacrifice. In other words, if you've got the Holy Spirit within you and that premeditation of sin is there, and we see it so commonly out in the world today, what did he die for? That's what he's asking right there. What did I die for? There no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. That's stage one. Now, the second stage is where you begin to enter that deep slumber. So what happens to your body? Well, two things. 
your heart rate slows, and your temperature decreases. Mm. In a spiritual sense, what's happened is you're not quite as on fire as you once were. That heart's just not beating as fast for the Lord. You went lukewarm. We talked about that before Revelation 3, 15 and 16. Jesus says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold nor hot. So then, because you're lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. That is what we've fallen into from a cultural standpoint today. Mm -hmm. Middle of the road. We don't even want to sit in the pew anymore. We'd rather just stand in the aisle. We don't want to do that. So stages three and four go together. That's the deep sleep stages. Stage three, you might sleepwalk or that's just going through the motion. You don't even realize what you're doing, but you're doing it. Well, some people have a tendency to do that even with church. We come in and it's just, it's natural to us to go through a process and we just continue that process. But where is the worship in that? Where is the worship? Or even worse today, we tell people, I have actually heard people say, well, I've been teaching others how to worship. Well, how do you do that? Matter of fact, you can actually, if you want to see spiritual sleep, go to some of the bigger churches, go to some of these events out there where people just are, have their eyes closed and they're just raising their hands, but they have no idea what they're doing that for. No clue. That's all they've been taught. They've not been taught the word. They've just been taught if you do this, that's enough. That's worship. Stage four, though, your muscles become paralyzed. You couldn't do anything about what's going on around you if you wanted to. You've fallen too far. You've went too far. Isaiah 59, verse 2 through 4, the Bible says this, But your iniquities have separated you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perversity. No one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. They trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. That's what's happened in a lot of the churches today. And we've allowed it to seep out into the culture. Matter of fact, the, 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 the church wants to become popular culture. They, they want to they wanna bleed into the world, but not in the right sense. They don't want to do it with God's word. They just want to do whatever's popular today. And what it's doing is it's lulling everybody to sleep. It's just lulling people to sleep. People are just, they're blind to it. They don't know what's going on. Because they're not taking in God's word. Now in Proverbs 23, verses 34 and 35, the Bible says, Yes, you will be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea, or like one who lies at the top of the mast, saying, They have struck me, but I was not hurt. They have beaten me, but I did not feel it. When shall I awake that I may seek another drink? That's what's happening today. People are so asleep now, and they're searching for anything that brings them comfort, not realizing they've already got it in God's Word and the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. They don't realize that. Sadly, that's what they're seeking. And they've just been beat down by the culture today. Matter of fact, Christians have been beat down by the culture today. We're beat down repeatedly and excessively. To where have we given up? Have we given up? Do we even understand what's going on around us today? I'll talk to you a little bit about a couple of events that happened over the past week or two. This is what's happening today right before our eyes. Last week on The View, everybody knows the show we're talking about. All the ladies get together and they talk popular about whatever's going on. They, they berate anyone that they can. You know, anybody who doesn't agree with them, they're going to just take them to task. That's what that show's there for. Nothing else. Well, they had a comedian 
I use that term loosely, on the show who turned a worship song to our Lord into a vulgar song about our president. They took joy to the world and turned it into a vulgar song about President Trump. Doesn't sound like much, does it? I mean, that's to, to normal, ordinary people, that's just funny. That's just funny. To a Christian, though, with their eyes open, it's, wow, what did they do to that song? How did they do that to my Lord? They turn a worship song into something completely vulgar that it was never intended for. And the audience just cheered and clapped. Why? Because now ridiculing our Jesus publicly or putting someone else on his level, we're okay with that. We're okay with that. We're fine. That doesn't matter. We walk around in a sort of daze and just shake our heads but take no action. Why? We've been lulled to sleep. We've been lulled to sleep by the culture today. Matter of fact, candidate for president, Beto O'Rourke, stood up in a town hall meeting recently and said, you know what? He's in a, he's in a church full of... We'll call them same lifestyle partners. That's what the church, that's what this setting was for. And he said, you know what? If a church or religious establishment refuses to perform same sex marriages, we'll start taking away their tax exempt status, and that's just where we'll start. That's just where we'll start. You could see the hate in the man's eyes when he said it. That's just the beginning is what he was saying. That's just where we're going to start. That's where we beat the drum. That's where we start, folks. In other words, they're going to extort us as a way of getting us to compromise the gospel. That's what's going to happen. So people in this country are for religious freedom, but only if they're free to sin and call it what they want. And as long as everyone else agrees on it. Well, my, matter of fact, I heard somebody the other day say, well, my sin is different from your sin. And, well, you may not call what I call sin, sin. But, you know, it's just, it's different. You know, if I sin this way, I may not perceive it as sin. I don't care what your perception is. What I care about is what the Bible says is sin. That's what I care about. What his word says is sin. It's not about our perception. Our perception doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. What matters is the Word of God. It's not about our perception. Matter of fact, our perception is is that, and what's being taught today is so surface level. It's just God is love, God is love. Just believe on that. Just believe that. And that's where it stops. We don't go any deeper. We don't dig. We don't go any deeper than that because that's all we want to know. But if a relationship was all just love, do you not have to work at a relationship? Amen. Is a relationship, a marriage, Brother Greg, you've been married several years, right? Four kids. Has it all just been just love? No. If it's been perfect, I've got to question that marriage a little bit. Even in just short of two years, I can tell you, we get on each other about things. It happens. If you're just preaching to one side, you've got a problem. Amen. You've got a problem. If you're just preaching love, 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 that's great. I believe that. God is love. Yep. But if that is all you're preaching, what happens when they get out here, the baby Christian gets out here and says, Whoa, what happened? Whoa, life hit me. I'm homeless. Or I lost my job. If God is so much love, why did that happen to me? Why did that happen? So what happens? They turn away. They turn away because all you taught them was love, love, love. That's all it is. We've got to teach relationship. It's not just one-sided, and it's got to be both. We have to give just as much as we want Him to give. We have to give back. It's It's part of it. That's how it works. But the problem is today is that we're being lulled to sleep because persecution is coming for us right here on our own soil. 
you want to find out just how disturbing it is, you need only to watch five minutes of a new documentary. It's titled Wolves Among the Sheep. Now I watched this, and this, this documentary is actually what inspired the message. I'm going to be honest with you. God spoke to me clearly through this, through this documentary. It's a great illustration of where a lot of us are and have gone today. But this statement was so profound that it left me weeping. It left me crying. What we hear today, I, I, we're going to take it outside the four walls for a minute. This is exactly what I'm talking about. We can't be blind to what's going on today. I want you to think about the country of Iran. I want you to think about what you've heard about the country of Iran. All we hear today from even our government and our media, they're radical. They're radical. They're radical Islamists, and they are coming to destroy us. What if I told you today that the fastest growing Christian church on this planet was in the country of Iran today? What if I told you that? Isn't that crazy? The mosques are empty now. The mosques are empty. People aren't praying to Islam anymore because they recognize it for the evil that it is. It is not the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they are seeing that more and more. And people are turning to Jesus in record numbers in that country. And all without an evangelist that can come in and teach them that because their government doesn't allow for it. Think about that. Their government doesn't allow for it. You have that privilege here today. Somebody can walk in here off the street and evangelize to us about the Lord Jesus. They don't have that privilege over there. They don't have that. Husbands and wives, when they walk out their door in the daytime or even at night, they just pray that the other one's going to come home safe because... They understand where they're going if they die, and they're unwilling to compromise. And they don't want to bow down to any other person or agenda. These people are truly on fire for Jesus Christ. That's just what they are. There is no, there's nothing about them that screams compromise. They understand the gospel, the true gospel, not the watered-down version that we've got today. Because, boy, it's coming. It's, it's already here today. And we've exported it into these other countries, too. Prosperity. You, you, you turn to Jesus, you can have it all. Whatever you want. That's satanic. That's what that is. That's satanic. That's what that is. And I'm going to talk to you about that. But when they talk about Jesus, they talk about the blood and redemption from sin. That's all they talk about. That's it. They don't talk about sin today and why Jesus should justify it. They don't talk about that. These people are on fire for Jesus, and they know the difference in what man says is sin and what the Bible says is sin. And they're always going to defend Christ and the Word above all else, no matter the cost. But I want to share with you, immigration's been a problem in this country for a while. Everybody knows it, but it's been talked about. But an Iranian man and his wife had the chance to move here. That was a blessed day for them and their family. They moved here because they're Christian in a Muslim land. The government there is still Muslim. So if you talk about Christianity in that country, who knows what you're going to face. Matter of fact, his wife begged him after they were here for just a short time to go back to Iran. She begged him. On hands and knees, she begged the man to move them back to Iran. Iran, this country that says, if you're Christian, we're either going to incarcerate you, and that's going to be a brutal jail time, or it's going to be the end of your life if we catch you. If you're talking about Christ, you're going to die. He died for you, that's fine. You're going to die for him too. That's what this country says. And this woman had the opportunity to move here, and she wanted deathly to go back home. Why? Why would you want to leave this country where we have religious freedom today? See why? This is what the wife told him. There's a satanic lullaby here, and all the Christians are sleepy. And I'm beginning to feel sleepy. 
She discerned a threat to her faith here that was greater than what she would face there. How greatly disturbing is that? That here, she feels more threatened here than she would in a country that literally says, I'm taking your life if you talk about Christ. So the Bible says in Romans 13, 11 through 13, And do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. No provision. In other words, you have to do what? Deny self. That's what it all boils back down to. How much are you giving to Christ? Isaiah 51, 17, the Bible clearly says, Awake, awake. Stand up, O Jerusalem. You who have drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of His fury, you have drunk the dregs of the cup of trembling and drained it out. We're called to awake and mind the things that belong to our everlasting peace. And then the cup of trembling should be taken out of our hands. Peace should be spoken to us and we will triumph over Satan. Who has blinded our eyes and brought stupor insensibly upon us. Stupor is another good word for days or disoriented. And boy, we've talked about how he's all about confusion. That's what he does today. He wants to put us in a stupor. That's where the nation is today. The verse here in Isaiah is definitely for the Jewish church of that day. However, we can completely see the parallel with us today. We're spiritually asleep. Do whatever we can not to offend anyone and just go along with society. Keeping our head down and ignoring statements that made that we know to be contrary to what the Word says. In Isaiah 60, verse 1, the Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Luke 12, 35 says, Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning. Keep that fire burning and watch around you. It is time for us to wake up. If not, they're coming for us. That's coming next. I don't want to be a a Debbie Downer, but that's what's going to happen right here. We talk about religious freedom and about how excited we are to come worship in our own church house this morning. Yes, we should be. But listen, if we don't wake up to what's going on outside these four walls, we're not going to be able to walk back in here. They're going to take it from us. And why? They've already begun. Miss Hope, I'm going to ask you to play. Are you ready to give the ultimate devotion of faith? Are you ready to give your own life? It may not ever come to that here, but I'm going to tell you. It could. It could. It could very well happen here. How dedicated are you to God? And how dedicated are you to Jesus? Jesus is completely all in for you. If you've been saved and you know Jesus this morning, Jesus is all for you. All for you. Can you say the same for Him? I'm all in for Jesus. If you need to rededicate this morning or you feel like you've got a need... I want you to come and pray right here at this altar this morning. Because listen, the worst thing that we can do is sit asleep spiritually. We have got to wake up. The time is coming when we're going to lose the ability to do what we're doing today. The time is coming. Matter of fact, church, there are already preachers in California here that have been arrested. 
and sent to prison for preaching God's Word. It's already happening. You want to see that continue? Or do you want religious freedom? Do you want true freedom? We've already found it in Jesus Christ. And listen, Satan's not going to win. We will triumph over Satan. But how woke are we today? Are you awake today? Are you spiritually awake? Is there more that you can do? Can you think of more that you can do? Can you witness more? Can you go out and tell people more? Are you ashamed of the gospel? You just don't want to tell anybody. There's no need to be. He wasn't ashamed to die for you. Don't be ashamed to live for Him. That's the message this morning.